let's talk a little bit about the pre-construction world and what's kind of transpired over the past couple of years and where it's led to today, given the market downturn and what's happening if, with interest rates, where investors are at. You know, we're seeing, you know, headlines out of Toronto. All these individuals are totally upset. They bought two, three years ago, and all of a sudden their prices have dropped. They're not going to be able to assign them. There's all sorts of stories unfolding in that world. But something that, you know, you and I touched on briefly and that we just came out of a weekend, an incubator weekend, what we call incubator, which was a very kind of elite program that we put together with a group of, uh, I'll call them entrepreneurs, but real estate entrepreneurs. And they have other businesses, but they invest in real estate. And we put this kind of cool program together and it worked out really well. But we spent the weekend hanging out with a couple of amazing realtor business people here in the Vancouver area. Now, the point of that story is this, is as we sat down with developers, it was there was an opportunity there for somebody if they were interested in it. But the opportunity wasn't, oh, let's go through the show home or let's go through the show suite or let's go to the construction site. This is a conversation with, okay, here's the dirt. There's an opportunity if you want to buy dirt. Here's an opportunity on a project that isn't out of the ground yet that we're moving forward. And we share this is that if you're hanging out with a realtor who's taking you to a show suite in an end user condo building, you're too late. Do not invest in that pre-construction deal. It, it, the risk is very, very high. It's not that it's always going to go south, but that's a really high risk scenario. And a lot of people, I think, are bumping up against that today. They're at the effect of that right now is somebody was taking through literally through a show suite on a pre-construction deal. And I'm going, you're too late. You're far too late. There's at least, what, three layers before that, maybe four. And so that's something I think everybody needs to know in, in regards to what you guys do. That's the game you play. It is really about yeah. your platinum clients. I think that's a term that you might use for them. But anyways, they're about your clients that you're sitting down and going, here's some opportunities. And you're looking three, four, five, seven years down the road kind of thing in terms of the developers and builders you're working with. So do you want to just expand on that for a minute? Because And how are you handling what's going on in Toronto right now and, and surrounding regions? Yeah, so I, I'll start with what's called platinum access is, is I think the word you were looking for. So platinum access, what that really means is that you're working with a real estate agent who has the very first access to pre-construction units. The only people who would have access to those units before your agent would be the friends and family of the developer. So you're getting in at absolute the first time that this is available to the public. And then what usually happens is uh, they'll pick a handful of, of agents. How do you become one of those agents? Well, you have to kind of prove yourself to that developer over the last couple of years. These things don't happen overnight. So certainly if you're working with a new agent, chances are they're not a platinum agent. And sometimes, unfortunately, people will say they're platinum agent or they have first access, which which isn't always true. They might get access through um, their brokerage or maybe other agents that they're teaming up with. But normally to become a true platinum agent, you need to have relationships with these developers that take years and years to build. And the developer will give a handful of agents first access to units. So they'll give, you know, my, my team will get 10 units, another team will get five, maybe some team will get 12. And they'll, they'll hand out a couple units to some people. And they'll see how the sales go at what's called first access pricing. Then if the sales go really well, just as basic supply and demand would dictate, guess what the developer does? They increase the price. So in two weeks, on paper, technically, if you bought at first access pricing, you might have already made anywhere between fifteen dollars and $30,000, depending on how much the developer increases prices. And this can go again and again and again. And like you said, it, you know, it might be three, four times. Sometimes it might be eight times before it even gets to the general public. Usually by then the whole de the development might be sold out if it's that hot of a project and no one, you know, the, the, the general public don't even really get access. And so the important part, particularly if you're an investor, if you're an end user, who am I to dictate what you want to you know, spend on your property? Maybe you overpaid a little bit, but if you're going to live there for 10 years, you're, you'll make your money back. Um, but as an investor, you want to get in at that first access pricing because that's how you're going to see the highest return. That's where you're going to see the most appreciation. We actually call it forced appreciation by the develop by the developer because they're actually forcing the the appreciation to go up because they keep increasing pricing. So it's always great news when I get to call my clients in like six weeks and say, "Hey, guess what, George? On on paper, you know, you've made you've made thirty grand. 
Now you can't do anything with it. It's not like you can sell it today. That's what we call an assignment. That doesn't happen for, you know, at least a couple, excuse me, a couple of years before the development's almost ready to be, to be closed on. Um, but yeah, on paper, some people can make pretty good money. Now, because of that whole strategy, we have seen a lot of people in the Toronto market, and I'm not sure what it's like out there in, in Calgary in terms of pre-construction condos, but we saw a lot of speculative buyers. And I, I call them speculative instead of investors because they're speculating that in the next three years, the market's going to do its thing and they're going to you know, make tons of money on paper, $150,000, $200,000, and they're going to sell the paperwork and not close on it. Now, the problem with that strategy, as I see it, and again, this is me helping my investors. I, I don't want you to get into a situation where you can't close on a property and guess what? The market's tanked and there's no buyers for it. And now what do you do? You sell at a discounted price? Well, that's a bad investment. So I always advise my clients, look, that's not necessarily the strategy I think you should purchase pre-construction condos with. I think you should go into it with the intent of closing. And let's spend the next three, four, five years, however long it takes for it to be built, to put all our eggs in, or uh, to get all our ducks in a row, excuse me, so that we can actually close on this thing. Now, at that time when it's time for closing, if you've made a lot of money on paper and you wish to sell and the market's great, awesome. We can help you find a buyer. Although at that time, I would still honestly advise you to hold on to it because if you've made that much money on a property doing really nothing over the last four or five years, imagine what's going to happen in another 10 years if you just hold on to it. Mm -hmm. And so I generally still advise my clients to, to hold on to these things. But sometimes people will say, look, no, I, I you know, my circumstance changed. I just re retired. I need the cash, whatever it is. And then we can help people assign it. So we do see people get into, into some sticky situations here in Toronto. Luck Luckily, um, I don't I don't see that often because I just don't advise my clients to get into a pre-construction deal if they don't have the intent of closing on it from the get. Well, there's a couple points to this really that are important that I think is what's causing a lot of the grief is that people did not have a plan B. So what you really just shared is an interesting one, right, which is you say, okay, well, plan A is I'm going to hang on to this property over the three or four years. I'm going to ride the appreciation if it's forced appreciation. And that's what I'm going to do. And then I'll make a decision to whether I want to close on it and take it on or whether I'm going to sign it or what I'm going to do. But if that would be plan A. But if you don't have a plan B, in other words, if you haven't thought through the process of what could happen and saying, OK, if that can't unfold the way I want or if the upside isn't as big as I think it want, I want it to be, I'm ready to do what's next, which is to actually close on the deal, get financing and go through the whole process from there. So it's like a plan A, plan B, whereas so many people were riding this. I'm a genius uh, kind of then the music stopped. And there's no chairs, right? So that is what we're dealing with. So for investors, if you're listening to this and going, I would never do a pre-construction. First off, I always say pre-construction works if you're understanding what you're doing and you're working with the right realtor. What we hear about is the speculators and when ultimately the shit hits the fan because they have no plan and they're just literally speculating and rolling the dice on the deal. That's where we hear the bad news. So what I'm trying to get out of this message with Laura here today is that there are some amazing realtor or investor focused realtors who actually think like Laura, think like the REC team. And this is not a commercial for REC, by the way. This is literally uh, saying is it's rare to come across a Laura and an REC in this game. That's my and I've been in the in this market for a long time and the investor market for a long time. And we were very, very happy when we created within the real estate investment network, the relationship with REC as a trusted partner, because we share common values in terms of being strategic, following a process, not speculating, but actually investing based on what's happening economically. So well, anyways, and that, you, know, you know what I actually think we do well, sorry, Patrick, to cut you off is, is, is between the two of us is we practice what we preach, right? So I know that you use the same strategies that you teach at rain mm -hmm. and we use the same strategies here so me personally i i have pre-construction condos that i have purchased so mm -hmm. it's not like i'm i'm advising people to do something i wouldn't do myself and everyone on my team like Jazz and Simeon, who own REC canada they have multiple pre-construction condos so we like we win when you win and we're 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 advising people to do something that we ourselves have done and we have seen it work for us we uh, most of the time do not assign those condos. We are not speculative buyers. We are true investors. And I know that 
timing is everything and you can't always time the market. It's not like I can say for sure in four years, my condo is going to be worth a whole bunch of money. But I can tell you in 20 years, it sure it sure will. Because that mm -hmm. I know through history, if I just look at the stats, you know, real estate goes up and down upwards. What I specifically like about pre-construction condos is that it doesn't take a lot of work, right? So for the next, so I have a building that's going to take seven years for it to be built. It's going to be, uh, you know, a marquee building here in Toronto. So seven years, that's what they said on paper, which probably means, you know, nine years for the sucker to, to get built. And it's gone up in, in, in value over time already, which is great, but mm -hmm. I can't do anything with that. Um, but, you know, for me, I don't need a mortgage today. So that's great. I can kind of like use my money to invest in other businesses and whatnot, which is what I've been doing. And and I I pay the deposits over a period of time. So it's hard to get into like this was a, a one bedroom condo. It's over a million dollars. That's a tough pill for people to swallow. Uh, and it is for me. I, you know, it's a tough pill for me to swallow. But I was able to get in because I could pay the deposits over a period of time. So I didn't need the full 20 percent down. I didn't need that kind of money access to that money today. I, I can pay for it over the course of time while it's getting built. So I think those are some reasons why people really like it, but it's not the be all end all. Like you said, you, you know, I, I think realtors need to look at their investor clients and really understand what, how involved they want to be. Some people are like, don't ask me to lift a hammer. I'm not doing shit with my, with my unit, or I don't want to deal with the tenants. Um, and, mm -hmm. and some people are like, look, I'm really hands-on and I'm happy to, to landlord and do all those things. And so I think it, it's not one size fits all. We need to, you know, adapt to, to people's needs and what their lifestyle requirements are.